Hello everybody, welcome back to your channel Echo Engineering. This is the first video of a series for algorithmic trading with Python. In this series, we learn, we learn different libraries in Python used for data science and algorithmic trading, along with doing and implementing different strategies with Python. The first libraries that we are going to work is actually the Python basic itself, because I noticed that too many people without learning Python completely and settle it by doing too many uh, examples, they go for other libraries and they would have problem in the future. So the second library would be NumPy and then we work with Pandas and then we work with Matplotlib. These are the basics for data science. And then we go for machine learning libraries, including scikit-learn, PyTorch and TensorFlow. After finishing each of these sections, we're doing a lots of different real-world interview tasks for each section, so the topic would be completely settled in your mind. What we learn for Python? This video has different sections. The first section is making Python environment. We want to uh, implement and install an environment for our programming with Python. This section is very important, and it can be new for you because Normally, we don't have it in uh, other languages, including MQL4 or 5, because they are already implemented in uh, MetaTrader. And then the second section would be defining variables and operators, how we define variables, how we work with operators in Python. Then we learn how to define list, tuples, dictionaries, and set data types uh, in Python. They are very important because uh, we usually don't work with them like that in uh, C++ and MQ4 and 5. After working with these data types, we have a different section for strings. Uh, you may ask why we have a different section for strings. Strings uh, usually are not very hard and important, but I should say that strings in Python are very important and they have too many attributes and methods and we can use them and we can implement and work with the strings with the different ways in Python. So I decided to have a different section for strings. Then we learn how to work with conditions and loops, including if conditions, while loop and for loops. For loops are very important in Python because they are implemented very differently and very practical actually in comparison with C++. Uh, so for loops are maybe a little, not, I don't say that they are complicated, they seem a little different in the first uh, glance, but you will find out that they are very practical and versatile. Then we learn how to define functions and lambda, what is function and what is lambda and how we define map in Python. This section is very important too. And at the end, uh, the last but not least is object-oriented programming in Python, which I believe can be a little confusing for the beginners. And that's why I designed it in a way that it can be easily understood by the beginners and you will learn it once for all. I hope you enjoyed this video and stay with me to the end. Do not forget to hit the like button if you liked it. More importantly, if you have any suggestions or any questions, I would really appreciate if you leave me a comment. I will read them and consider them for upcoming videos. Stay with me to the end. So in this section, we are going to talk about the environment and create a Python environment. Uh, what is the environment? Actually, environment is very easy. Uh, it is just uh, imagine that we are going to work with different versions of Python, with different types of uh, libraries, which each libraries can have different versions. Uh, in this case, for example, for one project, we prefer to use Python 3.1. For the other project, we prefer to use Python 3.6. And for another project, we prefer to use Python 2.7, for example. And in one of them, we are going to uh, use this environment for data science purposes. So we use Pandas, NumPy, Matplotlib. But for example, for the other one, uh, we are using this environment for, for example, medical engineering purposes. And we are using some uh, specific libraries for this uh, med medical uh, engineering purpose. So, for different tasks in different fields, we are using different environments, which contains uh, different Python versions and different uh, libraries. This is the whole concept behind the environment, and we are going to use Anaconda 
or Miniconda, you can use both of them, but in this case, we are going to use Anaconda to create Python environment and start programming uh, in your environment. Along with these libraries and the Python itself, we will add uh, some IDEs, for example, Jupyter Notebook, or you can use, for example, PyCharm or uh, Spider, or even you can use Microsoft Visual, Microsoft Visual Studio with its extensions uh, to as an IDE to program your Python. So I close this PowerPoint and here we continue to install Anaconda. So now how we should make our Python environment. To do so, first of all, you should Google Anaconda uh, and then when you Google it, you will see the Anaconda websites. Click on it, go inside the Anaconda website and try search to find out uh, the download link because it's free but it depends on when you are using it and you are searching for it because they have changed their website configuration a lot but uh, there is always a free download go to the free download and try to download it for windows uh, or if you are using mac or linux you can download it for your operating system it doesn't matter and install uh, your anaconda and after you download it and install it, now we want to make our environment by using the Anaconda prompt. Uh, I open a new folder here in my desktop and I call it Python. And I want to put my environment, including all my project in this folder. So I will have everything here in this folder and they are all centralized. So after you install Anaconda, you can search for Anaconda prompt. And here is your Anaconda prompt. Uh, it's very important to notice that the first, it has uh, two parentheses. In this parentheses, it's written base. And then it is C and user Lelipur, this is the directory of my current computer. This is the directory that I am working. What we have in the parentheses is actually uh, the environment that is now active. What is the environment? A Python with some libraries, we call it an environment. A Python uh, interpreter with some libraries. But when you install Anaconda, it automatically install uh, its environment and it will be the base environment. Our base environment will be the Anaconda environment. So now I want to change my directory to, for example, he, this this is the directory that I want I want to work on it. I copy it and here I just write cd change directory and paste the directory that I want to work on it. C user Lelypur desktop Python. Uh, I can if I press enter, I will be now here in this folder. In this folder, I want to install my environment. How we are going to do that? Because I change my directory to this directory, when I install or create my environment, it will be automatically uh, saved here and it will be installed here in this directory, which is this folder. Uh, now, in this folder here, I want to have two subfolders, uh, one of them named uh, Python environment and the other named is project and we want to have all projects, all our projects that we are going to work on, uh, on them here. I can just right click and press new folder and rename it, but in this case I want to do it from Anaconda prompt and when I am in this directory, the directory that uh, we can see here, I can just say mkdir, which stands for make directory, and we name it Python uh, environment, like that, in while. This is, if I press enter, now I can see that a folder will be appeared here. This is Python, Python uh, in our Python environment folder. I change directory by cd, change directory to Python environment. If I press enter, now my directory is inside this folder. It's here. So now I want to create, I want to create an environment inside this Python environment folder. To do so, we use Anaconda. 
by a command named Conda. We just simply write this one. It may seem a little complicated, but it's not. It's just a command. It's not. It's just a command from Anaconda to create environment. We say Conda uh, create create pre dash dash pre uh, prefix dot backslash env for standing for uh, environment. Then I wanna install my libraries. The libraries that we are going to work with a lot are numpy space pandas space uh, matplotlib lib scikit-learn and Jupyter Notebook to write the code on uh, it, we just we say jup I press enter and it should start to install all of these uh, libraries with the Jupyter Notebook. I press enter, it starts installing them. Oh, we had an error. Uh, okay, I spelled it wrong. Jup uh, I sh it should be Jupyter. Uh, sorry for uh, that mistake. And I change it to Jupyter. And I press enter. So I press Y and press enter. And it continue to install it. So now uh, the environment is installed. It may take a little time, but after it is finished, now you will have an environment folder here in Python environment. This is our environment. Uh, I go back. Uh, I go back. To, I want to go back to the Python folder. One step back, uh, in my directory, I say cd double dot enter. Now I am in a Python, not in a Python environment. Here, uh, this is our environment. I want to make another folder for our project, and I do it with mkdir, and the name is Python projects. Uh, I press enter and I want to go to this directory with cd python project. Now I am in this folder, python project. Here I want to open one Jupyter notebook, but first of all, we need to activate this environment that we have here. This is our environment. We can just go inside and and uh, uh, copy this path, but we have another way to do that. We can say uh, conda env list. It should uh, return all the environment list that we have on this PC, on this computer. Uh, we can see that we have three environment. The first one, which is the base one, and we can see here in this parentheses, this is base, is located here. See user lady for Anaconda 3. This is the second one, and this is the third one that we installed right now. C user, uh, your uh, computer name, desktop, Python, Python environment, and ENV. It's exactly here. This is our uh, environment list. We can copy it from here. I copied it. Uh, we could just right click and copy as path from here too. Then I say conda activate this environment that we created. Now it is activated. How we know that? Because before that, in this parentheses, it was written base. It means this address, the, ana the anaconda, the environment that was installed when we install anaconda. Uh, but now it is changed to this environment and it has all the uh, libraries that we want it to be installed pandas, numpy, matplotlib, scikit-learn, and Jupyter Notebook itself. Now I just write that, write Jupyter Notebook and our programming environment will be opened. So, 
it automatically opened from here. Now, where are we? Why I don't see anything? Actually, we are at the moment in this directory, Python project. We are in the Python project folder. Uh, I want to open a Jupyter notebook, click on new notebook. And it, we want it to be Python 3 IP kernel selected. I change the name. I want it to be Python ASIC. I rename it and our Python is already here. We can test it together. I just for test, I want to see, check whether we have our uh, Python uh, libraries or not. Import. For example, NumPy as NP and import pandas as PD shift enter uh, import shift enter. We don't have any error. It means these libraries NumPy pandas are already installed. Now that I created this uh, Jupyter notebook, if I go back in our Python folder, in the Python project, we can see that we have Python basic that IPYNB. This is for I Python notebook. We can see that it is created here and we can continue our programming here. And uh, in the setting, there is a TAM and here you can change between Jupyter Light and Jupyter Dark. If I press Dark, it would be in the dark mode. Uh, some of the viewer in the comment sections asked me to use the uh, dark mode so it would be more obvious and it seems with the dark mode the quality of the video is higher so I change it to the dark mode. If you want to be in the light mode you can just st uh, stick with this light mode and do not change it but we record the video in the dark mode. So in this session we are going to talk about the numbers, operators and variables. Uh, if I just enter 2 here, for example, and press Shift Enter, uh, it will return us 2. Uh, and I can say, for example, 2 plus for 5, it will return us 7. We can do it 4 plus uh, 8, for example, 12, very easy. And then we can use subtraction like, for example, 8 minus 6, it will return us 2. 6 minus 10, it will return us minus 4. And 4.5, for example, minus 5.8, the result would be a float. Uh, it would be 0 0.7. Then the multi for multiplication, we can say 8 multiplied by 7, 56. The multiplication is very easy. It's like that. And we can say, for example, 8 divided by 2 for division. It returns us 4. Uh, but, for example, 8 divided by 3, it would be 2.66. Uh, this is how the operate, operators works. And we can say, for example, 2 power by, with uh, these two signs, uh, for example, 4, it will return at 16. 2 power by 4 would be 16. 2 power by 10, it would be 10, 24. This is how the operators work. But we can define variables instead of just using the numbers like that we can say for example uh, t is equal 5 and k is equal 4.2 and we can say for example uh, and along with this k we can uh, define r is equal to 6 then we can say t, t multiplied by r the result would be 30. T is 5 and uh, R is 6. Then the result would be 30. To see the result, you always press Shift and Enter. But it's very important to notice that in Python, data types are dynamic. It means we do not define what data types, for example, T has here. In C++ or MQL9, we usually say, for example, int t is equal five, 4, or we say, for example, double k is equal 4.16. This is like this is how we are doing it 
doing it in uh, C++, but here it is different. We don't need to define the data type for the variables. Uh, when we define it, for example, like that, t is equal 5, if we just check it with type t, like that, it will return as integer. If, for example, I do it for k, it will tell us that it is a float, and it automatically when this variable get its value, the Python interpreter automatically give this variable uh, a data type. This is how it works. It is the same for uh, strings too. For example, I can say name one is equal to string. We do these two signs for strings, but we can use even one sign two. But I will tell you what's the difference. For example, name one is John and uh, name two is team for example i shift and enter and if i just call name one if i just write na and then press tab if i press tab it will tell me how many options do i have here the name i wrote with e it's wrong so if i say just name one and i just write na and then press uh, shift and tab i should first run it again i just say na and shift tab i have two options which one i want to choose for example i want to choose name one and shift enter the name is john remember we used this two sign but we see that it is in between only one one of them and what is the difference for example i can say text one is equal if i just say hi i am team then I want to have the text one, a seed. We don't have any problem. But what if instead of writing I am, I use I'm? Then we would have problem. So when we are want to use this form, instead of we change this sign to double quotation like that, so we wouldn't have problem when uh, running a text. And here name one is a string. If I say should determine the type of this name one i will see that it says it is a string and the type is string and the type is automatically assigned to name one when we uh, gave it a string value we define another variable named pi it is equal to 3.14 this pi if i just check type pi it is a float I want to change it to integer. I just write int and enter pi inside of it and shift enter. It will only return 3, not 3.14. Because we change a float to an integer and the values after this point will be ignored. And But still, it, when I write down pi, it is still 3.14. If I want to save it, I should put, I should say, for example, int pi equal to this one and i should assign it to another variable if i want to save it i can see that this one is still uh, three we can use uh for example t what was the t t was five five here is a number but what is str t i want to change it to string now it is not a number, it's a string, but it is a sign like five, it's a string. And uh, we can use print to print variables too. For example, if I just print uh, pi, it shows me 3.14. We need this print because for example, um, we had two names, name one and name two, and we can define two ages. For example, age one is 25 and age Two is equal to 35 for example I press shift and enter now I want to print a text like my name is for example team and I am 35 how do I do that I say print there is two way to do that both of them are with a string the first one is just like my name is curly braces space and I am curly braces and then and then we say that format and in the format we for the first uh, for the first uh, curly braces we say enter name two 
name two, and for the second one, enter age two. This is how it works. If I press, my name is Tim and I am 35. You can do it in that way too. For example, we say x equal to name one and y is equal to age two. And in this case, we can just copy x here and y here easily. Shift enter, we have the same result. But in this case, we choose to where put x and where put y. If I say put x, uh, put y here and x here, it will be a little meaningless. My name is 35 and I am Tim. I, but I just want to show you that in this case, we are the one who choose where, which curly uh, brackets is for x and which one is for y. And we have full control on these curly braces. Uh, but we can use it in another way and we can say print f my name is name one, name one for example and i am again curly braces age one shift enter it's still the same instead of using dot format at the end we just put an f at the beginning and it will return the same result uh, we almost covered everything but here i just forget something that uh, we we define power but uh, there is another uh, there is another operator named mod if for example i want to have mod of 10 divided by uh, 3 10 mod 3 in python we do it by percent 3 and it will be 1 10 mod 3 would be 1 10 mod 4 would be 2 uh, it means when we divide 10 by 4 2 will be remained this is all for this section. Uh, in the next section, we learn how to define lists, sets, tuples, and dictionaries. And we go forward with the strings because strings are very important and we need them a lot. Hello again. Uh, in this section, we are going to talk about the list, dictionaries, tuple, and sets. Uh, we start with the list. Actually, list is the way that we express an area in the Python. In C++, we call it area and enums, but here it is, uh, it is a list. Uh, and first, we define, for example, my list, and the number is 1, for example, and it's equal to, in these two brackets, we say uh, 10, 20, 30, 40. And I press Shift and Enter. I call my list, my list one, and if I press, this is my list, 10, 20, 30, and 40. Uh, the, I can reach any of these elements by their index, and the index starts from zero. If I call index zero, it will return 10. If I call index two, this one is zero, this one is one, and this one is two, it will return 30 and we can easily reach all elements of this list just by calling them with their number uh, i can add other values to this list by using append my list for if i call it again my list and i press that and if i press that and press tab i can see all the attributes that i can call here uh, for list for example we use pop and append the most there are methods uh, if i just call for example append i press tab then i can finish uh, i can uh, complete it i can add for example number 100 and then i call my list again and i can see that 100 is added to my list and we can add uh, vari values to this list like that i can delete variables from this list by using pop uh, like that my list dot pop and here we enter the index of my elements for example if i want to delete number 30 i should add 0 1 2 this is the index and if i should enter 2 and i call my list again i can see that 30 is not in my list anymore it is popped up so this is how we add and delete value values from the list but i can for example add some other numbers too 
I again call my list and pent, for example, to 100. And now I want to see all values of this list. This is the values. But now I want to just choose 10, 20, 40, and 100 of my list. I call my list. And here I say choose from 0 to 0. One, two, three. If I press, if I enter three, then it will choose up to, but not included the index three. It means it will only return 10, 20, and 40. If I press enter, I can see that it's only 10, 20, and 40. Uh, I can, uh, again, this one, I copy and paste it. I can say choose from the beginning to the third one it will be exactly the same with this one but in this case when it is empty it means starts from the beginning if i press shift and enter this is what it returns and i can say for example from one two four what would be that then it zero this is zero from it starts from one index one which is 20 and then one two three four up to but not included index 4 so it will only return 20 40 and 100 i can ask it to return from index 1 to the end if i don't write anything here it means to the end and uh, return everything to the end this is then 20 40 100 and 200 to this list we can add everything and we can even change our values for example now index 0 is 10 i want to change index 0 to 140 for example if i press shift and enter and i call it i can see that the first value the first index which is the index is 0 uh, its value has changed to 140 from 10 to 140. i also can add different data types like here for example all the data types are integer i can add a string like like a name for example and then I call my list. I can see that Tim is added to these variables. Uh, although it, this one is string and the others are integers. This is how we add and pop up. And you work with the uh, lists. We can define nested list too. What is nested list? When several lists are in one list. For example, this is the first list. And then here we have one, two, three and then we have 10 20 30 and then we have 100 200 and 300 now the dimension has changed we call this one my list my nested list and it's equal to this one i press shift and enter we call it and this is our nested list if i put one zero here it will return me the whole one, two, three list. This is because the dimension has changed. Here it was, uh, the, here it is two dimension. The first dimension we choose the list, and then we choose which elements of this list we want. For example, if I want to choose three, I say my nested list zero to choose the first list, and then here I choose the second element, then it will return three. But if I want to, for example, uh, return 100, I should say choose one, 0, 1, 2, the second list, and from the second list, choose first element. Uh, it will return 100. Here we can choose uh, several elements too. For example, I can say my nested list and choose from the beginning to the, we can say, for example, 0, 2, or two and if i shift and enter press shift and enter it returns us the first and second element of our uh, first dimension uh, i can choose for example uh, like that i can say zero then it will return only this one this is how the nested list works and now we define a tuple uh, we say my tuple is equal 
we use parentheses to define tuples. Like it would be, for example, again, 10, 20, and 30. If I call my tuple, then this is what we have here, my tuple. What's the difference between tuple and list? The difference is that the tuples are immutable. It means we cannot change them. Here, I cannot say, I can, for example, say choose the first one, and it will return 10. If I say choose the second element, it will return 30. But I can, if I say choose the second, the third element, 30, and change its value to 115, uh, we would have an error. And it says tuple object does not support item assignment. We cannot change it. This is the main difference between tuple and list. The tuples are immutable and we cannot change them. But others, the, the other topics that we covered for list, most of them are valid for tuples too. Now we want to define dictionary. What is a dictionary? Dictionary is actually some keys, which for each keys, we have some elements. Uh, let's define one dictionary. Uh, it is the first one. So we call it uh, my dictionary one. And it is in between the curly braces. Then we define our keys. The first key, for example, we, we, I call it names and column. And it is a list like Tim, John, and Peter. And then comma the second key the second key is ages and again column it's a list again and it is for example 25 32 40 these are the ages and just for practice for example we can uh, name the third key two and i call it just a number and it is equal to one number for example, again, the pi number 3.14. This is how we define a dictionary. I can call it. And if I press shift and enter, then this is our dictionary. It has the first key is name, names. The second key is ages. And the third key is number. I can choose all the names by just choosing the names key like that and it will return me the names if i change it to ages it will return me the ages and if i choose only the number it will return me 3.14 then i can see all if i just call it and press that then i have attributes and methods for example i can just write keys and press shift and enter it just return this one but because it's a method if i uh, put two parentheses and then press shift enter i can see all the keys the first key is names the second key is ages and the third one is names we can have access to the old keys of the dictionaries and we can just call them by call the items by calling item method and shift and enter i can see this these are the items uh, and they are tuples. The first tuple is name and its values, the list, and then the key and the item, and then the number and its item. This is how we work with the uh, dictionaries. We can just easily add items to our, to our dictionaries. For example, we don't have any keys named, for example, uh, strings. We can call a key name string, and it is equal to just hello world and how are you? If I call this my dictionary again, I can see that another keys, another key named string is added, and its item is this one: hello world, a list, hello world, and how are you? This is how the list works. We can change them too. And that was the all oh, about the dictionaries. Now we talk about set. What is a set? Sets are actually very similar to dictionary. We define them by uh, curly braces, but there is no key for that. For example, I can define my set 
and it is equal. We define them with curly braces, but it is 10, 11, 12, and for example, 13. I call my set. This is my set, but set does not accept repetitive values. For example, if I define another set, set one, and if I say it's equal to uh, one, 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 two, three, four, four, five, four, six. If I call it and I press Shift Enter, and now if I call my my set, I copy and paste it here and press Shift Enter, I can see that my sh my set now is one, two, three, four, five, six, and we don't have repetitive values here. And we can add values to my our set by saying my set one dot press tab this is all attributes and methods that we have uh, we can for example say add some values to our set we can say add for example 10 if i add 10 i will see that it is added but if i say add dot add another six and then I call it we have only six here and we it doesn't add to six because as I mentioned the sets uh, do not accept any repetitive values to remove some values from the set in a in the list we use pop but for the set we use remove to remove some values from our set and we should enter the exact value in the pop we say uh, when we press enter for example zero it will remove the first element but here because there is no zero no zero value in the set we should have error and it will tell it will it will say that there is no zero here but if i enter six here and shift and enter call it again we can see that in our set we don't have six anymore one two three four five ten so it's very important that the set does not accept any repetitive values and to add or remove values or numbers to our sets we should use add and remove but in the list we use append and pop hello again uh, in this section we are going to talk about uh, strings more because strings have a lot of uh, attributes and methods that they are important and we can use them first of all i define my first string and i call it i just put hi how are you this is our string string one this is our string but strings are actually very similar to the list and if i choose the first element of my string it will return as h and if i put one it will return as i and if, if i put two it will return as a space because after hi there is a space and then how are you uh, we can have access to all elements of a string by just uh, putting their index into these brackets and we see uh, the all, uh, all elements of this uh, string but now I define my second string and it is equal to uh, space, 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 hello world and again space, space and several space. Then I shift and enter, I call my string two, but there is a method named stripped. If I press tab, as stripped because it's a method we put it in the two parentheses what's the difference between methods and attributes we will explain it in the object oriented programming section but if i put the cursor inside the parentheses and press shift and tab the dark string the dark string which is the descriptions for this method will be appeared for us and it will tell us what does this uh, method do it will return a copy of a string 
with leading and trailing white spaces removed. Very important, leading and trailing white spaces. It means the white spaces at the beginning and the white spaces at the end will be removed. If I shift and enter it, I will see that it says hello world and uh, the white spaces are deleted. But we instead of white spaces, for example, we can use hashtags like this one. In this case, inside of this, uh, uh, this method, we just say remove the leading and trailing hash and it means just remove this hash map in the at the at the beginning at and at the end of our string if i shift and enter it we see that again we see that all of these uh hashtags are removed and now the next methods for strings that you want to talk about is actually split here we have string one again string one this is our string one hi how are you we can change it for example here instead of a white space we can just put a hyphen and shift and enter shift and enter this it says hi how are you but uh, i put this hyphen in on purpose if i say split what does this split do i press shift and tab to see the duck string return a list of substrings in a string using sep as the separator string this is the sep the input okay but if I press shift and enter, then it will return as a list like that, which it separates all the elements by the white spaces. It says, okay, hi, here we have white space. So hi is one element of this list. Then how are is the second element of this list. And then you, because it separates them by the space. But we can say that separate them by sep is equal to separate them by this hyphen if i shift and enter then we see we have hi how hi how and then it reaches to this hyphen and it separate the the uh, mm, the first part and the second part which are the, the trailing and leading of this hyphen here and it is hi how and our u will be in the second part or we can define another string like for example we name it current work directory and it is equal if i open my anaconda prompt here we define our work directory to be this directory i define it here this is our current work directory it should be k this is our current work directory. We will have an error, but I will explain uh, in the upcoming videos how we can solve it. But now just remember, because we have this error, we can put an R at the beginning of this work directory. So this error will be disappeared. And this is our work directory. It will just add it two uh, slashes in the strings for uh, each of these directories between user, my name, and uh, desktop Python, we have just these two slashes. But now we can say that split these slashes. If I press Shift and Enter, it should be split. Then we can see that it is split like that, and we can we can have access to each of these elements as a string for example zero will return as uh, c or let me just copy and paste this one and write it in another cell it will return as c if i say from the first one from the second one to the end then it will return as zero one from second to sec uh, zero one from two three and four all of them will be returned these are the indexes or we can say for example four then only these two will be returned this is how we can work with the uh strings and the the third string is for example is equal to two multiply three plus four if i press shift and enter it's just a string and it doesn't calculate anything for us 
This is string, we can call it string three. String three, it's just a string and it doesn't calculate anything for us, but we can use eval. Uh, sorry, actually we should use this. It's not, an, it's not a method for the strings, it's just a method for us. We should write eval and put this string inside of it, and then it will calculate what we have inside of this string. It calculate two multiplied by three would be six plus four will be ten. This is how we use eval. And then we you wanna talk about the is alphabet or not. String four, for example, string four is equal to one, two, three. If I press shift and enter and is alpha bad, if I run it, it will return as false because these values here are not alphabet and they are numbers. If I shift and enter, it is false. But if I use is number, is number numeric. Shift and enter, it will return as true. Like if instead of one, two, three, call it high, then for is numeric, it would be false, but for is alphabet, it will return true. But there are too many important uh, methods that by pressing tab, we can see all of them capitalize, center, count, encode, find. Or if I just say is, for example, is num, is alpha, is ASCII, if it's, is it ASCII code or not? Uh, is decimal, is it a decimal or not? It will turn true or false uh, based on what we have in our uh, string. Is lowercase or is it? We can see all of them like that. But now two important things are, things are upper and lower cases. We can change them to the upper and lower cases. How do we are doing it, we define string five and uh, it is equal to high with h i capital h capital my name is peter for example and this is our string hi my name is peter i can just press dot and upper then it will change all the character of this element to the capital and we can to the upper cases and we can change them to lower cases by using that lower very easily it will change all of them to the uh, lower cases so uh, again this is our string 5 now I wanna split this string 5 that split it would be this list and I call it string list. This is our string list. We want to rebuild this sentence that we have here. This is a list. This is a list of strings. Okay. But we want to rebuild it. This is a list. Hi, my name is Peter. We want to uh, combine all of them together. How we do that? We use join. Okay dot join i'll explain how does it work i paste it here and i put a space here i press shift and enter it just built this sentence again but what if there is no space here i press shift and enter so all of these elements of this list will be stick together. I put a space here, they will be separated. I can put, for example, a star here, separate them by a star. Or I can put this backslash here, separate them by backslash. We can put them together and using this join, and it's actually very practical and we use it a lot when we are uh, working with the directories or want to change, for example, the a link to a website or some commands coming as a JSON format and uh, it's very com uh, applicable and we can use it in uh, different uh, applications. 
So in this section, we are going to talk about the comparison operators and uh, if conditions and for loop and while loop. Uh, what is comparison? Uh, what is comparison operators? Like, for example, if we say one is greater than two, it will return as false because this statement is not correct. But if we say one is smaller than two, then we receive true. It returns as true. If we say one is equal to two, this statement is false because one is not equal to two. But like we can say 10 is equal to 10, then it will return as true because this statement is correct and true. And we can say like nine is not equal to 10, and this statement is true. So it will return as true but if we put it here 9 because 9 is equal to 9 then this one will be false these are comparison statements and we can have two of them together for example like that or this is or statement or like 15 is not equal to 16 both of these statements are uh, true it returns true but even if only one of them is true then because it is or it is whether this one is correct or this one is correct if only one of them is correct then it will return as true uh, normally in C++ for or we use this sign but here in the Python we just normally write down or and for and we use and itself and not and not this sign like C++. We just say and. In this case, both of these statements should be true to return true, but because the second statement is not correct, uh, so it doesn't return as true, but we can change it like this one. 15 is less or equal to 16. So this one is true, this one is true, both of them are true, so it will return as true. Then, having said that, we define an if condition we can say that if uh, okay let's say uh, num 1 is equal to 10 num 2 is equal to like 15 and we say if num 1 is less than num 2 then column enter as you can see because it's a condition it will start it by one tab. And we don't need to use uh, curly braces here as C++ or MQL9. We just push tab and we start coding. And then it would be related to the if statement. So we can say if this condition is true, print as this statement. And number one is, or number one is less than number Two. This is the print. This is the print, and we can say else if we can use else if with another condition, and it is ill if like that, and we say if num one is equal to num two, then column print it automatically starts the next line with one tab. Uh, print this statement both num numbers are are equal and else if none of the above statements are correct else column i want to print number one is greater or bigger than number two this is very simple statements just we want to see how if ill if and else statement works now, number one is 18. If I press shift and enter, it will say that number one is greater than number two. It should be two here. And if I change it to 15 itself, it says both numbers are equal. And by 14, it will return this one. Number one is less than number two. But we should notice that if 
both of if and ill if conditions are correct, then we only return the if statement here and not ill if. In this, um, uh, in this situation, for example, if I add an equal, if number one is less than or equal than number two, and we put it, uh, we change the number one to 15, both of them are equal, and the if condition is correct. But because both ill if and if conditions, both of them are correct, uh, we should not see both numbers are equal, but we should see number one is less than number two. I uh, run it again, and as you can see, here number one is less than number two. So it's very important. If both conditions of if, if, and else if are true, only the if condition will run. Now, the second topic is while loop. Uh, we, define a, we define a counter its uh, initial value is zero and why we say while counter is less than or equal to five print counter or we can say just f the counter to curly braces and here we just say counter count And now we should plus plus, we should say counter is equal to counter plus one. Or normally, instead of writing it like that, in Python, we just say counter plus equal one, like that. So if I shift and enter, then it will start counting, where it will start this while loop, print this statement here and then add counter by one so we will have zero one two three four and five because this equal is here too this is how the while loop works it's very easy but the most important loop here is for loop because it's very important uh, and it's a little different with what we have in the c plus plus but still it, it it is much more practical i believe uh, in C++, we say for, for example, int i, semicolon, as long as i is less than or equal to, for example, 5, i++. plus plus. This is how we write a for loop in C++. It means starts from i equal, for example, 0 initial value, uh, starts, uh, run this loop, run this for loop and starts with i0 and then add i by 1 and repeat this for loop as long as i is less than 5. But here in uh, Python, we define for loop like that. We say for i in range and here we have, if I press shift and tab, we have three inputs. First one is step. Sorry, the first one is the beginning of i, and the second one is the end of i, and the third one is the step. What does it mean? It means if I say start from zero and count to 10, and each time for each iteration, add i by one, and we can say print i for us. If I press shift and enter, we can see that it's, it prints i for us, and i first is 0, then it is 1, 2, 3, 4, and until 10, but not included. So it's 0, 2, 10, up to 10, but not included. So 10 is not included here. If I increase this one to 2, it's our steps, we can see that it prints as it, it prints for us 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8, but not 10 itself. We can say starts from 10 to 0, but steps, we want it to be minus 1. If I press Shift and Enter, 10, 9, and until 0, but not included. 0 is not included. This is how we write for loop. But we can say for, for example, uh, I here is just a name. We can say for counter 
counter and we can do it for example with two r so we know that we can put everything anything here in range just 10. when it's just 10 it automatically consider the uh, start of this for loop zero and the step one we can say just again print this counter so it's exactly the same with the first uh, for loop that we had here because it automatically put the initial values for the starts of the uh, for for the start of the for loop zero and the step one. We can add another print here, for example, and we can say the for loop is over. Again, shift and enter. The for loop is over. Now I want to show you how break and uh, continue works for the for loops. Here, before print the counter, I add an if statement and I say if counter is equal to 5, then column break. What does it do now? So, if I press shift and enter, I can see that it just starts counting from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. But when the counter is equal to 5, it breaks the first for loop that it can see. And in this case, it is this one. And it and it breaks the, these for loops and goes out of the for loop and print that the for loop is over. I copy and paste this one here. But now here, instead of break, I just continue, right? Continue. What would happen if I press Shift and Enter? Here. Now, in this case, it starts counting from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. But when it reaches 5, when the counter is equal to 5, it doesn't break the for loop completely, but it just stops running this for loop only for this iteration where the counter is equal to 5. So that's why we don't see this, this print runs when the counter is equal to 5. When it sees that the counter is equal to 5, it doesn't continue this line, and we don't see this line. So that's why it doesn't print the fifth line. It doesn't print the six, actually, the sixth iteration, which is for number five. This is the difference between break and continue. Break, stop, for loop, but counter, but continue stops the for loop only for the iteration that it sees this continue. Now, we have another type of for loop that uh, it starts doing iteration on a list. Uh, I define another list, my list, and it's equal to uh, my list, and it is, for example, number 10, and it is equal to, again, the names, John, Tim, and Maria, for example. This is our list, this list. I call it this is our list but we can say for names and I put two name two s here because you I want you to know that we don't have to spell it right this is just a simple name you can you can uh, put anything even like something like that but it's better to have some meaningful statement here that's why I say just names and with two s in my list and column um, I want to print is names but in parentheses like that if I press shift and enter it will print all the items that we have in this list so these names is actually our iterable variable and in the first iteration these names will be equal to the first item of this list which is John and then it run whole over through this for loop to the end in this case it just have one print statement here and when it is finished it goes back again and then it, it go uh, the name will be equal to the second element of this list and to the end so names will be so this for loop will run for each of the elements of this uh, list that we have here 
We can write this for loop in another way too. We can say, for example, for uh, i in range len and this list here. What len is list here? I just want to show you something. Okay, I can just say uh, this len my list. If I shift and enter it, it will return us four. It will return us. Uh, then the number of elements that this my list has and here it is one two three four so i can say for i in the range of this it will be it, it means from for i from zero one two three go and run this for loop and we say print this my list and here i want to print the item i first time i is zero so it uh, prints the item 0, then it prints the item 1, and if I shift and enter, it's exactly the same with what we have here. And we can say for uh, counter and comma item enumerate this my list number 10, then print counter and print item okay what does this enumerate do uh, it will print both the index of the items in this list and the item themselves too i can shift and in press shift and enter we can see that first the index of john is printed which is the counter and then the name of John, which is the item, is printed. For the next for loop, first the index of the Peter is uh, printed, and then the item, which is Peter itself, is printed. And uh, like that goes on. So at the end, the counter is three, which is the index of Maria, and the item is Maria itself, which is the last item for this my list uh, ten list. And last but not least, uh, as I mentioned before, strings are really similar to the list. So I can just again define string uh, like 10 and it is equal to hello world or hello world 14. And you can say for character in string 10 if character that is alphabet is true and print this is we can just write here f because i want to add something to our print this is an alphabet character and it is character itself this one so then another if statement if character is numeric and uh, it is true then I want to print if the character is this character variable number and it is numeric so if i press shift and enter we can see that it uh, run this for loop for each character of this hello world 14 and for the first one which is h it says this is the alphabet character and it is h then it says it is e l and until it reaches to this one and four number and here it says that the character is one uh, number and it is numeric or we could just say it is we could just say it is number like that and then it would be i think much better the character is number one and it is numeric so this is how we use for loops in python it seems a little complicated but it is not and uh, 
while you are working on it, you get used to using it, and you will find it much better and much uh, practical in comparison with C++ 4 uh, and what we had there, how we uh, closed the for loop in C++ or uh, MQL 5 or 4. Here, I believe it's much uh, practical. So, uh, in the next section, we learn how to work with the functions, with lambda, and then we learn how to uh, use object-oriented programming in Python. So, uh, in this section, we are going to talk about the function and uh, object-oriented programming. But first of all, I want to talk about the least comprehension, which is some which is a topic between for loop and function. So, uh, I define I define uh, a list. I call it again my list. For example, eleven. Uh, it is equal to ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, and eighteen and twenty. This is my list, and I define uh, power two list and uh, it is an empty list. Now I say for item in this one, my list 11, I want to do this loop and I want to power two list dot append. I want to append this value to my power two list and fill it in each iteration and I want it to be item powered by two very easy and if I press shift and enter and call this power two list now this power two is it has these values first at the beginning it is empty there is nothing in it but then for each iteration of this for loop it multiply the item of the my list 11 and add it to this power two List. So first it would be 100, then 12 multiplied by 2, powered by 2 would be 144, 196, and until 200, which is 20 multiplied, uh, 20 powered by 2, or 20 multiplied by uh, 20. This is how these four loops work. But we can do it in another way. Instead of using this for loop here, we can have, we can define a list like that, and here I can say item powered by 2 for item in this my list 11 and if I press shift and enter it will return as uh, sorry this one should be power and if I press shift and enter it will return as exactly what we had here and it is completely the same uh, what we have done it's actually instead of writing it like, like writing this for like that we just said okay return as item multiplied by 2 where the item is in this list and put everything in one list. This is exactly the same like what we had here. It may be a little different, but as I mentioned before, uh, while we were working with these four loops and uh, uh, its variety of performances, then you will get used to how to use it. This is a simple version of uh, these four loop that we have here but now we want to define function and apply this uh, for loop that we have here in the function so how we define function if you remember in uh, c++ we first define the data type that this function returns and then we give it a name for example power 2 and then here we define the data the types of int, um, the types of uh, inputs uh, like here we normally it is double or anything else but here in Python we don't define the data type of the inputs or outputs we can define them too but normally we don't do it we to define a function we use def to define the function and then the name of the function which here it is power 2 and here we just define uh, a number uh, this is our input. We don't uh, define the data type of this input. It's just a number. When the user enter a float number, this number will automatically be float. When uh, they enter an integer value, this number will automatically uh, gain the data type of integer. And then column. And then here we just can say return or 
just we can say return number this number powered by two and if i call this power just say write power and press tab i can have access to power two function here it says that it is function it is not an instance it's a function so if i choose the function and enter a number in it for example five it should return us 25 if i press shift and enter it will return us 25 we can define another function like just hello for function it doesn't have any input and it just print has just simple hello world if i shift and enter and call this one with two parentheses then it will print us this hello world it's very simple but we can do a lots of things with this function we can define for and this function actually we call them method when it is about uh, object oriented programming and it is the basics of object oriented programming we should learn this function uh, very well and we usually use functions in our code to simplify uh, the tasks that we are going to use them in different projects now we define another function named uh, power to list creator and uh, the first the first value that it takes the first input is actually power we can just here change this one power list creator and here we can say power value this is our input and we can say it is should be integer and the, init the initial value is two and then we have another input it is the input list and it is a list of integer and its initial value is one two three we can delete this part and this part both of them uh, and we just can define the data type of this power value for example what uh, the user enters if the user enter a float value then the data type of this power value will automatically be float and we don't need to assign any initial value to that but i just want you to see another form of using it so this is our function i just pass i, I just pass it and i want to test it it seems that it's okay uh and now we want to define a list and we say I item power by this power value for item in this input list here this is exactly what we had here but we are using a function for that so we don't have to change the inputs and the item of the list every time and we we call it final list and we can return this final list or we can directly return this list that we created here but i just want you to know what we are doing so i do it like that i press shift and enter and now this function is available and it is uh, ready to run if i just call it without putting any input it will power it will powered all of these items by two and return it because it just it just do the calculation for the initial value of each of these inputs so then it will return as one for nine but i can change it and i can say okay power value what i power value i want it to be equal to three and input list i want it to be equal to for example 10 20 30 40 and if i press shift and enter this is the result 1000 8000 27000 and 64000 this is the results of this function okay and uh, the last two things that i'm gonna talk about are map and lambda what is map if i just write map and with two parentheses and put the cursor inside the parentheses and press shift and tab this is the duck string actually i should uh, tell you what is duck string too uh, how we can define a duck string is we just define uh, this six signs like that uh, in between them here if we write anything then the user when is using this function 
can uh, see what does this functions the function do for example i can say this function is a simple hello world function and for example for this function we can write down that this function just more powered up the input by two uh, but for example here if i just try to run this code and go and put the cursor inside this uh, function of press shift tab then i can see the duck string but I have not run it. I run it again, and here, shift and tab. The duck, duck string says this function is a simple hello world function. So, having said that, going back to map, if I press shift and tab here, we can see that it has two inputs. First input is a function, and second input is an iterables. It is something that a for loop can run on it. For example, a list. Uh, if I define this function, power2 function, as a first input here, like that, and then the second input, I want to be a simple list, 2, 3, 4. If I press Shift and Enter, uh, let's delete this parenthesis. If I press Shift and Enter, I ca we can see that it will be it return a map with this address but we can say change it to a list change it to a list so we can read it better i want it to be list and to parenthesis like that if i press shift and enter it run this power to function for each element of this uh, list that we have here but i want to say that instead of using this power to because this function is very simple this function is very simple this function can be uh, rewrite like that by using lambda we can say lambda and then we define the input for example the input will be a number and then column then we can define what we want to do with this return this number and we want to return it we can say here just number powered by two. This is exactly the same with what we have here. First, we say lambda, and then we define the input, and then we define what we want to return. This bo both of them are exactly the same. To prove it, I just copy it. And here, instead of using power two function, I just insert this lambda expression here and if i press uh we can if i press shift and enter so i press it here if i press shift and enter it will return as exactly the same what we have here so this is how the lambda work we write lambda and then the input name and then what we want to return after a column input column what we want to return this is uh, it, it would be very practical because many times that uh, instead of just writing down some function for simple tasks uh, we use lambda in python you get used to that too uh, after using these uh, expressions uh, more and more in python